It's Platt, and today we try a twist on American Classic. That's next to Platt's Beer of the Week. So the uh, particular beer we have today is Michelob Amber Bock. Comes to us from the fine folks at Anheuser-Busch. Uh, this particular brand, brand and the specific beer itself, are, is kind of what I thought of when I started bringing in, you know, non-craft beers into this series. Uh, I think the Michelob brand in itself is kind of forgotten, uh, especially in its modern day iter iteration, excuse me. And I've always liked their Amber Bach beer too, so I thought this would be a great little video uh, to do. Uh, first, let's start, start off with Michelob, their little history. Uh, the brand was first introduced in 1896 by, by Anheuser Busch and is actually uh, developed personally by Adolphus Busch. Uh, at the time, the beer was marketed as draft beer for connoisseurs. Now, we have to remember, 1896, we're in the Victorian age. There's wealth, abundance. And even though today we kind of look at like Bud Miller and Coors, it's just like college beer or cheap beer. At the time, they were, and if you find advertisements from 50, 100, 125 years ago or so, you would see that these brands referred to as premium, premium lagers, premium American lagers. They were sort of the best things those breweries were making, and in a lot of people's mind, they were quality beers. But Anheuser-Busch wanted to take things up another notch, and that's where they came out with Michelob uh, for, was that kind of super premium, premium plus, what have you. And throughout its history, it's always been marketed as the next step. Uh, Price-wise, it's always been a little bit uh, higher than standard Budweiser, you know, Budweiser products. Uh, as far as the name Michelob itself, it comes from a city, and hopefully I'm saying this right, McLoby, something like, it, McLoby, McLoby, something like that. Uh, apparently, at the time, it was a German village. Now it's in the Czech Republic. One of the uh, brewers for Anheuser-Busch apparently came from there, thus the name uh, we get, uh, Michelob. For about the first 60 years of this brand, Michelob was only sold in draft. Again, it was draft beer for connoisseurs. Now, part of the problem was, throughout those 60 years, the, the beer market had changed from just drinking beer in a pub to bottles to cans, and Michelob kind of lost traction because everything was just draft. That changed in 1961 when Anheuser-Busch started pasteurizing the beer. They started uh, bottling it. Uh, five years later, in 1966, they put it in cans. Now, when they first started bottling it, though, they had a little breakthrough there. They had the old school, and if you're old enough, you might remember the old Michelob bottles. They're kind of teardrop shape, look very unique. I always thought they were just add a little bit of class, a little, just a little coolness to the beer. Um, if you're not old enough, uh, you missed out. Uh, they kept those teardrop bottles all the way up till 2002. That's when they dropped them for kind of standard bottles like this one. They did bring them back for a little while in 07 or 08. If anybody from Hennizer Bush is watching this, bring back the old bottles. I just always thought those were real cool. Um, just like had a great look. I, kn I know they end up getting awards and stuff uh, for the bottle, uh, the design itself. Uh, throughout the history of the brand, several times Anheuser-Busch has tried to spice things up for bringing out new variations of Michelob. Uh, in 1978, it was Michelob Light. Remember at the time, that was kind of the first wave of light beers. And by late 70s, early 80s, the rally was everybody needed a light beer, and Michelob came out with theirs. Then, three years later, in 1981, they came out with Michelob Classic Dark. Uh, I remember at the time, even though I was not old enough to drink, I remember at the time, though, that kind of causing a buzz because especially late 70s, early 80s, everybody was drinking straw-colored, light American lagers, and that was about all you had. And uh, to bring in, like, a darker beer with those darker malts, that was kind of, you know, something a little different. Ten years later, in 1991, Michelob introduced Michelob Golden Draft. That was basically Anheuser-Busch's answer to Miller Genuine Draft. That did, not gain that did not gain traction, and I don't remember that brand being around for too long. However, six years later, in 1997, they kind of go back to the more traditional roots of uh, being something for a little more sophisticated, you know, older drinker. And they came out with a line of several different beers 
that they ended up putting into like variety packs or holiday packs. Um, there was their honey lager, which I remember being a pretty good beer, a Marzen. Uh, they did a bourbon cask beer, which at the time was kind of a new, you know, this, we're talking about 25 years ago or so. That, that was kind of a new, new concept. And the uh, Amber Bach, which we have today, which was my favorite of those, and I and I thought they did a real good job. And it's stuck around the 25 years, so they must have done something right there. Um, as far as what the, the brand is today and what we think of it, it is Michelob Ultra. That came out in 2002. It kind of led in the next wave of the light beer phase, the ultra or extra lights, the glorified flavored waters. Uh, as far as the Michelob brand today, all the markings going into Michelob Ultra, you know, they got celebrity athlete endorsers like my guy Brooks Kepka, what have you, uh, on there. They do flavored, fruit flavored. I think there's a lime and a pomegranate, stuff like that. And, and that's where they're dragging the brand. Uh, I do like, though, that they still have the traditional Michelob, I think the light, and this Amber Bach, though. Well, before we try this particular beer, let's check out the stats. So today, I quickly want to talk to you about the term Bach. This beer is called Michelob Amber Bach, but it's not a true Bach. And there's actually quite a bit of this out there in the marketplace, so that's why I want to talk about today. Uh, this technically is Vienna Lager, and there's other examples of this. Probably the most famous one is Shiner Bach from Texas. It's beer, you know, that, that I loved in college and kind of grew up on, uh, but it was not a true Bach. I mean, and you see this out there. So I want to kind of compare and contrast Vienna Lagers and kind of get to why this happens. Uh, first, let's go SRM, which is... Uh, Kind of a color score. Uh, Vienna lagers tend to be 12 to 16. A true Bach 20 to 30. A little bit darker. Uh, Vienna lagers are more copper, while a true Bach is a little more brown. Uh, IBUs or hop bitterness flavor, whatever, pretty much the same. They're they're pretty close there. Um, Bachs tend to be a little less carbonated. Um, they both use noble hops, similar style hops. They're both lagers. So again, stylistically pretty close. Where the real difference comes out is an ABV. Vienna lagers, four and a half to five and a half percent. More of a session style beer. While a true Bach is, starts at six and goes up to seven, seven and a half percent ABV. Now, this means you're putting in uh, more malted barley to bump up that ABV. So you're getting a little more malt flavor a little more body to your beer. Uh, at 7%, you're going to notice the alcohol when you consume it, unlike a 4.5% Vienna lager. Now, some of you out there may go, well, hey, how can they label this? And, you know, if it's not that, this and the other. A, there is a little ambiguity on beer styles as far as the labeling goes. Also, too, probably what was going on then, and now I'll, I'll use the example of Texas, uh, where I was going to college back in the 90s, uh, down in Texas, however, living down there, they had Shiner Bach was, was becoming hot, even though, again, it was a Vienna lager. Uh, you had Michelob Amber Bach, and An Anheuser-Busch at their Houston brewery brewed something just for the Texas market, and it was called Ziegenbach, and it was their take on the Bach-like beer that was really a Vienna lager. Now, probably what's going on there, especially 25-plus years ago in the South, Texas, I know their liquor laws are insane, you probably could not have purchased a true Bach beer, 6% or higher, at a grocery store, convenience store, anything like that. Probably would have only been sold at a liquor store. Well, we got beer to sell, so we don't want to need to deal with that, so we'll create a Vienna Lager. Now, I got a feeling that is what happened there, but you will see some of these out there, they term Bach, uh, but it may be a Vienna Lager. So keep your eye out for that. Um, again, it may be one of those things where it's just more of the mass produced brands that, that do this. So they sell at a, you know, convenience store level, but that's what that is. And I just wanted to briefly talk about that today. Well, enough about the box. Let's drink an Amber box. All right. That pours pretty nice. Um, 
we'll say brownish copper. Definitely the cop, you know, definitely see the copper in the light, but it, it's it's brownish. It's a little more brown than I want to say the Shinerbach. Nice malt on the nose, and you're not getting any hops, so let's give it a try. Man, that's just a nice malty beer. You get, you know, some of those darker malt notes. You get some toffee in there. Uh, you know, get that sweet punch. Um, again, this is a kind of a darker notes. It's not the light, toasty uh, notes of, let's say, like a blonde ale or something like that. A little more sophistication there. Hopefully no one's getting shot out of the window right now. But uh, overall, nice, well-executed beer. Again, it's not a true Bach. 5.1%, um, still fairly drinkable. Um, medium minus body. Um, just goes down easy. Um, again, it's more malt sweetness, but it's not viscously sweet or anything like that. Pretty solid little beer. I've always thought this was just a nice, well-executed beer when I don't want just a light beer. But let's say, again, I'm at kind of a chain sports bar or something like that. Just having beer with the boys, but I don't want just a generic light. Something like this, I think, really fits the bill. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or beers that you'd like me to try, please put them in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.